Hey guys, so the first thing we're going to do is get the wheel up on jack stands, and we're going to go after these 12mm bolts to hold the caliper on. There's a little tight room against the suspension, so I like to use two wrenches, like so. And that will loosen up the, depending on which side you're on, you're going to have to go downward if you're on the passenger side, upward if you're on the driver's side. Once you get them loose, you'll notice the caliper pins like to spin a little bit, and it'll keep you from keep removing them the rest of the way. So there's actually a slot for a 15 millimeter or 16 millimeter wrench, depending on what model you have. You also want to loosen both uh, upper and lower before you remove it, so you don't flop the caliper one way or the other and pull in the brake hose. You can see here that I'm using the wrench to get into that slot I mentioned earlier. It's a little bit tricky to find it because it's kind of hard to see, but as you see, the open end wrench grips on the one side. You can also use a vice grip if you can't get a wrench on there at all, but vice grip usually chews it up and can ruin your boots. Now, so we got the bolt out on the upper side. Now we're going to go ahead and do the lower. comes out just as easy. Now the easy thing to do is you don't want to be prying against your hardware if you're going to be reusing it, but what I do is I take a big screwdriver and pry up against the caliper. This compresses the pistons just slightly so that you can just remove it with ease instead of fighting against the pressure on the rotor. As you see it pops right off. You can set the caliper up out of the way and make sure you're not hanging the caliper and make sure it is supported. In the video, um, I'm going to be replacing the rotor because the pads are metal and metal, but you can just pop the pads out as I'm showing now if you're just doing a pad replacement. This is the hardware I was talking about. The next we're actually going to be removing the 18 millimeter bolts that hold the caliper bracket on because like I said I'm removing the rotor. It takes a lot of leverage. I use a half inch drive long ratchet. Continue on with this. Remove that bolt. They can be a little tough because of the Loctite. And the lower one, remove it the same way. But you notice there's the upper one I removed and the wrench on the lower one. So I break it loose with the half inch drive ratchet. For this one, the suspension bolts for the trailing arms actually kind of get in the way of removing the bolt all the way. So what I end up doing is taking an 18 millimeter ratchet wrench after I've loosened it and removing it the rest of the way. And there's the bolt I was talking about on the suspension side. Position the camera here, and now I'll just get it the rest of the way out with my 18mm ratchet wrench I mentioned earlier. This makes quick work of it. You can use a regular wrench if you need to, and that gets the caliber bracket off. Now you notice the rotor. If you have trouble getting the rotor off, you can actually hit it in between the studs with a ball peen hammer and wrap it on the sides a little couple times. Mine's actually pretty loose. I can just kind of spin it back and forth and it'll pop off. Rotor's badly scarred on mine. If you pry too hard, you can actually rip off the emergency brake pads from their bondage. And they're kind of a pain in the butt to replace. So, I like to be safe and just pull nicely off. Then you want to sand off the rotor 
uh, hub surface and make sure all your major rust is removed. And clean your new rotor with appropriate brake parts cleaner. And so we've cleaned off all the ro uh, rust on the hub surface and we're going to position our new rotor on and just seat it fully and usually you can get them to stay on on their own on the rear or you can run a lug nut on just to keep it straight for you to make the job a little easier. Now we're going to be lubricating the caliper slide pins and the brake hardware for the caliper racket to fit back over the rotor. You want to make sure you clean any rust that's on the indentations where the hardware goes because that can actually force the stuff right out against the pad. I'm using caliper slide grease and brake quiet compound together. We can do slide a little bit on the pins. You don't need about too much, but we're going to make sure your pins are all cleaned off of rust. Do the other side. Make sure your boots are intact as well. Replace any hardware that needs to be replaced during the process. Slide the pins back in place. Make sure they freely move. If they are stuck at all, you will have issues later. I'm going to take the new hardware on the caliper bracket. Position it. There's only one way they go on, they slide on pretty easily. Same with the other side. Make sure they're seated fully. You're going to take a little bit of the caliper slide grease that I showed earlier and place it on the slide hardware to keep the brake pads moving freely its whole service life. Just a thin coat is all you need. I'm going to reposition the caliper bracket over the rotor. Get those 18 millimeter bolts positioned. Tighten those back up with the appropriate wrench. Make sure they're seated firmly. I go back over with my half inch drive ratchet just to tighten it down more firmly. These are actually supposed to be pretty tight on there. You don't want them coming loose. Now, make sure you coat the brake pad all around with the same stuff we used to lubricate the slide pins. They thin pretty easily. You just got to get that little brake wire indicator over the hardware before you place the brake pad in. Otherwise, it can kind of bind up on you. There we go, we're going to put the pad in, seat the pad in, yeah, so make sure it's freely moving, do the same thing with the rear side pad, and coat that all around the edges. Putting some on the back of the pad, it just helps keep your squealing down on the brakes since they are ceramic. have a tendency to make noise over time. So now we got to compress the dual caliper piston in. I use this by taking an old brake pad and a C-clamp. Place the brake pad into the caliper and then press against the pad 
compress both pistons in at the same time. If you try to do one side or the other, you'll just pop the piston out of the other side. As you see, just compress them in until they're fully seated. Then you can loosen up the clamp. And then make sure you haven't twisted up your brake hose or anything and just place the caliper onto the bracket and slide your 12 millimeter bolts back in. And tighten those down and then like I mentioned earlier you can just get the wrench in on the caliper pin on the one on the inner side just to make sure you're tightening them down all the way. Firmly see the bolt. Same thing on the bottom side. Okay, now the caliper is seated, rotor seated, brake job itself is essentially done on this side. So then what we're going to do is once you're done with all of your um, brakes and nothing's been left off, you're going to come up as you come up to the front and make sure you press your brake pedal to seat the pads. If you try it, don't do this and you go to back up or do anything, you won't have any brakes until you pump it, which can be a little startling and cause an accident. So you're just going to, pedal will go to the floor. Just keep pumping with the engine off until you have brake pressure. Once you have pressure again, then the calipers have seated and you're good to go. You just put the wheels back on, torque them down. And always make sure you check your brake fluid after you're done with this too. Make sure the level's not too high or too low. Check for any leaking. Hey, I'm Joe the Other Guy. Thanks for watching this video. Hope it helped you. Please like and subscribe. You can also find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Google Plus. And my email's down below.